What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to see just how much carbon buildup is on the back of the intake valves and on the fuel injectors on the Golf R. Now the Golf R is sitting right at about 10,000 miles. And while the EA888 generation engine isn't as problematic for carbon buildup as say the CCTA generation, I'm really curious to see how much buildup we have on this engine. Now up to this 10,000 mile point, we have had two oil changes using the 0W20 factory recommended oil. I've done a couple of in-tank fuel treatments. I've also done some in the crankcase oil treatments, both Liquamoly treatments. Other than probably two, maybe three tanks of fuel, this car has ran nothing but Shell V Power Nitro Plus fuel, always premium of course. And this car has definitely seen its fair share of wide open throttle situations. So going in, I'm guessing that we're not gonna have a ton of buildup and 10,000 miles is a pretty low mileage to see any at all. And yes, we could have used something like a borescope to simply look at the backs of the intake valves and even the injector tips. However, I feel like that may not tell the full story and I wanna have these in my hand and take a really close look. So first up, we're gonna remove the intake manifold. The intake manifold removal process on the EA888 is very similar to the CCTA, which is the previous generation of direct injection engine. Now I will have a full step-by-step -step DIY on removing and installing the intake manifold. And of course, I'll link that up for you guys to check it out. One nice thing about pulling this intake manifold is if you're just doing the manifold, you don't actually have to open up the fuel system. It does make it a tiny bit easier, but you don't have to open it up. All right, manifolds off, injectors are out. Let's see just how much carbon is built up at 10,000 miles. Here's cylinder one. I gotta say, that's more than I expected. Looking at the back of the port right where the valve hits the head, there's a pretty good ring of buildup on there. Let's look at the other ones and we'll grab a screwdriver and see just how deep that actually is. Look at all that junk inside cylinder two on that side. Wow, wow, wow. Cylinder three, cylinder three is pretty built up too. Now cylinder three intake valves are actually open. You can see a pretty big ring of carbon right where the valve would be seated if the valve were closed. And then let's look in cylinder four. Cylinder four doesn't look as bad as two and three, but man. That's crazy. Let's reach in here into cylinder one and see if we can get an idea of how much of this carbon is actually built up in here. Not too terribly much there. I'm actually more interested in what's along the backside. So that after a quick scrape is how much carbon is built up just above where the valve seat is. Super duper duper sticky and goopy. Kind of surprised. I didn't think there would be this much at just 10,000 miles. Let's go ahead and take a really close look at all four of our injectors. While injector failure on these Gen 3 TSIs is not super common, we still want to inspect for carbon and see what kind of buildup we have. So here we can see on cylinder one, there is some buildup on the tip of the injector but it's really not all that horrible. This dark strip right here is actually our seal. And then when we reseal this, we'll clean all this gunk off of here. In fact, just to see, let's go ahead and clean this one real quick, see how much of this junk actually does come off. So after just a second of quick cleaning, you can see how much of that just wipes right off. Now, while fuel treatments of any kind really won't do much to clean the backs of the intake valves, this right here is a place where fuel treatment may actually make an impact. You can see those tiny holes right there. That's where fuel sprays out. And as carbon builds up and up and up around those holes, it can disrupt the fuel spray pattern. So running an extra cleaner may help take care of some of that. I'm actually surprised there's this much buildup on these for only having 10,000 miles, always using top tier fuel and hitting wide open throttle quite often. Let's look at cylinder two here. You can see that one has quite a bit of buildup. For just 10,000 miles, that's enough to maybe even disrupt the fuel pattern. Cylinder three looks a little bit better, but you can see there's one really good spot right there. Pretty heavy buildup. And finally, cylinder four looks an awful lot like cylinder three. What's really interesting is that if you look close right around the ports where the fuel comes out, it's almost like this side over here has more buildup on it. Wonder if that's due to how the air flows through the cylinder head. So the way that injector sits in the cylinder head is like basically like this, with this, this side pointing down. So we're looking at it upside down here. What do you guys think? Why would it do that? Interesting, huh? 
These are our divider plates that live inside the cylinder head, and typically these get a pretty good amount of buildup on them as well. They don't look terribly dirty, but they do have some goop on them. You can see it's like a wet, sort of sticky, sticky kind of buildup. We'll get them all cleaned up before we put them back in, of course. This is cylinder four. This one actually does have a bit of harder carbon buildup on it. You can see it's almost like sticky tar. Ugh. Right, let's go ahead and clean our little air dividers here before we put them back in. Now I'm using carburetor cleaner. There are other cleaners that you can use. Seafoam, I've heard people using oven cleaner with a lot of success. B12 cleaner is another really popular one. Almost all of those style cleaners will work pretty well. Usually don't worry about getting these spotless, but you know, get them as clean as you can. In the grand scheme of things, these really aren't that bad. And to compare with one that's not clean, if they're being stubborn, just let them soak up with carburetor cleaner a little bit. These do tend to get a lot of buildup on them. Sometimes it's pretty nasty. Now here are our fuel injectors. I went ahead and resealed all four of them. I reinstalled one just as a test fit. Something to note on these EA888 injectors, this lower seal is actually quite a bit looser than it is on the CCTAs. Now there could be a couple of reasons for this. The kit that I was using is actually the one from the dealership. So it may have just been a little bit worn out. Yours may be a little bit tighter than this, but these are a tiny bit looser than the older CCTA ones. Either way, they dropped in just fine. Let's go ahead and get those installed. We've already cleaned the injectors and we cleaned those little divider plates. So we're good there. Next up, we need to clean the intake valves. Hands down, by far the best and the easiest, and if you do it right, the cleanest way to do this is with media blasting. There are even special fittings that fit right in the port of the cylinder head, so you can put your media blast wand and a shop vac on it and really make almost no mess, and cleaning both intake valves will take you all of probably 10 seconds total. So if you ask me, Charles, what's the best way to clean this? Media blasting. However, that might not be an option for some of us because you need the media blaster, you need a shop vac, and you need an air compressor to make it work. So what do we do if we don't have all of those things? There's an older Audi TSV that, while this is really goofy, it's a pretty good suggestion. And that's taking a bundle of zip ties, zip tied together, and using these to clean the intake valves. So this, coupled with some carburetor cleaner, or even a brush like this one, it actually does work pretty good. Now, if you wanna up your game on this, you can put the brush or even the zip ties in a drill, and that can help this job go a little bit faster. I will say though, just be super careful. You don't wanna fling this carburetor cleaner, bits of carbon or anything like that all over your engine compartment, or even worse, into your face. So we'll go ahead and get our carburetor cleaner or any of those other chemicals that I had mentioned earlier. A group of zip ties or a brush. I also really like to use some Scotch-Brite pads like this. You'll notice I cut a little corner off. That's all you really need. Cut a small piece, then you can use a pick to drive the Scotch-Brite and scrub down each cylinder. The key here though is you gotta make sure those intake valves are closed. If you're doing this with the intake valves open, you are going to dump all that carbon, all those chemicals, any little bits of Scotch-Brite maybe, all into the cylinder, and we don't want any of that stuff in the cylinder. So you gotta make sure that the intake valves are closed. Typically, I'll rotate the engine around clockwise, always clockwise, every time, on almost every engine, clockwise only on these engines especially, and make sure that I'm almost at TDC on the compression stroke. That'll ensure 100% that our intake valves are closed. It's also not a bad idea to lay a towel over all of that to make sure that you don't get this whole area saturated. We also wanna make sure that we block the intake ports to the other cylinders that we're not working on. This will help prevent any kind of cross-contamination when maybe the intake valves on the next cylinder over are open. Another key thing, carburetor cleaner can stink. Make sure you have your safety glasses on and make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. Once I'm 100% sure that intake valve is closed, I'll look in the cylinder and see how much carbon is really in there. If it's a little bit like we have on this one, we'll move to the next step. If it's really, really contaminated with carbon, tons of buildup on the back of those intake valves, I will take my pick or what works really well is a filed down piece of plastic, say maybe filing down the end of an old toothbrush and getting some of the big chunks out of there first. This will make it a little easier. If it's really contaminated and you start spraying the carburetor cleaner, that stuff turns to kind of a gooky material and it makes it a little bit harder to get out. Then what I'll do is I'll take some carburetor cleaner and just spray it in there and let it sit for a few minutes. Give it some time to work. Once that's done, we'll either take our zip ties, our brush like this, or my favorite one, the Scotch-Brite pads, 
and we'll just go into the cylinder and start cleaning it. I have to say a bigger bundle of zip ties actually does work better than this. This is all I got, so this is what we're using. Keep on cleaning, keep on scrubbing. If you're gonna use something like a pick to drive the Scotch-Brite pad, you need to be extra careful. We don't want this pick to scratch up our intake ports or our valves or anything like that. It may take a few times, carburetor cleaner, scrubbing, carburetor cleaner, scrubbing, in order to get those clean. Once you feel like you've got it clean, what I do is I take a rag and I take my pick on the end of the rag and I just go in and kind of dab up all of the carburetor cleaner. If it's clean, good. I make sure the next cylinder I'm gonna do is at TDC and do the same process. You may have to go back a couple of times to make sure that it's 100% right. What I'm gonna do for this one is I'm actually gonna only clean two cylinders. I'm gonna clean cylinder one and cylinder two. Cylinder two and three seem to be the most contaminated when we pulled our manifold off. So I'm gonna clean one, I'm gonna clean two, and then the next time we pull the manifold, we'll be able to see the difference between the two we cleaned and the two that we didn't. Now when you've got that cylinder clean, everything's good, make sure that you don't have any small bits of contaminant, any of that Scotch-Brite, any bits of plastic from your brush, from the toothbrush you use, whatever. You wanna make sure you get every bit of that out there. If you have compressed air, hit it with a little bit of compressed air and get all that junk out of there. Whether it's a compressor style nozzle or if you have those little cans that they use to like clean computer bits, that works fine too. I like to put a rag over it and spray it. That way all that stuff doesn't spray back in my face. I think we can get all this stuff out of here. I'm pretty happy with how clean that got. Let's also go ahead and make sure we clean the mating surface for our intake manifold. You don't want any bits of yuck on there to cause, uh, cause our manifold not to seat properly. Now this is pretty clean. If I were at the shop, Someone was paying me big money to clean these, I would want them a little bit cleaner than this. But I think for most of us at home, this is gonna be good enough. If you were experiencing cold start misfires, which is the number one symptom of carbon on the backs of the intake valves, this will fix those cold start misfires. Not gonna guarantee that you don't have any other issues, but if that was the issue, this will take care of it. Once you're finished cleaning and you're sure nothing got left below, we'll go ahead and reinstall our intake manifold. Next, what I like to do is open the driver's door and just turn the ignition on. This is gonna prime our low pressure fuel side and we can check really quick for any leaks. Next, we're gonna start our car, double check all of our work. We're looking for leaks in the fuel system. We're looking for air leaks. We're listening for weird noises and things like that. We are also gonna add a fuel treatment to our vehicle. This is actually something VW required when we were doing intake valve cleanings. And finally, one of my favorite parts is we get to take her out and go for a drive. Now, it's pretty likely that you're gonna get some excess smoke on this initial test drive. But usually after a couple of pretty aggressive accelerations, that'll go back to its normal state. You might even notice that your car starts up a little easier, idles a little bit smoother, and feels like it has more power. Just make sure to uh, give it the beans, as they say. All right, so with that, I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. As always, questions or comments, drop them down below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'll have a full step-by-step -step intake manifold video as well as a fuel injector video. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time.